Well, I got the propane carburetor all set up and running. It's been running. I've got dyno results, horsepower results, and I've got the parts list. And I will show you how to put this thing on and get it running, as well as a few tips, tricks that I learned along the way for making it a little bit more efficient. All right, let's take a look at the parts that we need to get this going really fast here. First and foremost is actually gonna be your regulator. Without the regulator, your propane is just gonna be leaking out throughout the atmosphere. The next thing you're gonna need is the carburetor. Without the regulator, there's a little gasket inside of here. There's enough pressure inside of even one of these little one pound propane tanks to push the gas right out the top and you're not gonna have any way to really stop it. So, pick up your regulator. This is for one pound. Pick up your carburetor. This carburetor, I'll give you the information right here. This I picked up off of Amazon. This, although called a dual fuel carburetor, actually allows for three different types of fuel. There's gasoline that comes in through the side for the carburetor, and then there's going to be liquid propane gas or natural gas, and you just switch between the two. And I'll show you something coming up where you need to be very solid as to where this is adjusted or it's not gonna work for you. So. Coming up on that, with the carburetor, there's typically gonna be a few gaskets. You will need to replace the gasket. And then a choke lever. Make sure that you have the right choke lever for your application. If you have one of these carburetors that you're gonna be replacing that has a shorter choke lever, you will need to take that off of your carburetor and replace it on the propane carburetor. Now, when you're running these up for gasoline, you may notice that the intake is gonna be on the side for the dual fuel carburetor, whereas it's gonna be in the back for the typical carburetor that you'd be using for gasoline only. And the typical carburetor that you'd be using for gasoline only has this lovely shutoff valve. However, this one, you may need to give yourself an extra length of tube for your gas line, as well as putting on a shutoff valve. Uh, since I'm using a one pound tank as opposed to a larger tank, which you can use on there as well, I'm using a step down. So I have two types of braided vinyl t hose here. Uh, working with propane, you're gonna wanna try and find rubber. I just was not able to find rubber and I wanted to play around with this right away. So this is braided vinyl. This is one quarter inch inner diameter hose, a three eighths inch inner diameter hose. And then in here I have a one quarter to three eighths or actually three eighths to one quarter barb hose reducer inside of there. So I'm gonna put the 3 8 on the carburetor and then I'm gonna take that barb reducer, I'm gonna be putting it on my quarter inch and then that quarter inch is gonna to run to my regulator and that regulator is gonna go right on my propane tank. So let's show the assembly and then some real world applications where either the generator usage or mine for fun, gonna be throwing it on a go-kart. All right, I have a demo engine here. This is on a small engine dyno. I'm gonna have dyno engine results coming up shortly. However, I'm gonna be taking this guy off really quick, putting on the propane carburetor just with this demo. Now, in order to complete this, what I did is I took a small uh, pair of needle nose pliers. I wanted to make sure it was flat there, not the serrated type. Took a zip tie, crimped that gas line because I am gonna be pulling the gas line off of the carburetor here in a moment. First thing, however, is gonna be removing these nuts, just using a wrench or socket to remove those nuts. I'm gonna make sure that my levers are both pulled over towards the side here where the pictures are, just so that we're not gonna be getting caught up on them as I pull this off. And then I'm gonna be simply pulling that off at the back side here. On the back side here, there is one tube that's gonna be pulled out of the valve cover. And then on the top here, I'm gonna be pulling off the, and then carefully make sure that that hose is off of the gas line and pull my air filter box right on off. Now from here, I'll be using a small needle nose pliers and I'm gonna be removing the spring going to the governor control arm. At this point, I will slide the carburetor out just a little bit, maybe a little bit difficult because I got the fuel hose here that I have to disconnect. There we go. As you can see, I've got it clamped so that the fuel is not leaking out. Now, once it is away from the engine, by about an inch or so, and you may have to squeeze those bolts, bolts just a little bit to help it slide off. 
Then we're going to be making sure that the, the uh, control arm over here for throttle comes off. And I'll bend it just slightly with gently and pop it out. Now my carburetor should come off and you will be needing this little plate for later. One carburetor, make sure that you replace this back gasket in the back here. Make sure that you have the new one in place. And we're gonna be installing this guy right on top there. Once you get it about an inch away from the engine, we're gonna be hooking that control arm back in place, taking our small pliers, pushing this back slowly, and putting that spring back in place. So now our control should be working. Now I'm gonna be taking the old choke lever, I'm gonna be installing that. And you notice that fuel line, that fuel line is gonna need your extension with your fuel shut off. So this is where you're gonna be putting that in place. Unfortunately, for the remainder of this video, this is just something I used for another thing. So just imagine that I put this on here, I clamp it in place, I put it on there. You're good to go from that side. The rest of the hookup for the propane, however, there's that plate that we just took off. Put the plate back on there very quick. Imagining that our gas line is now hooked up as we need to have it and out of the way. And you should have everything secured. You're gonna be making sure that this hose gets hooked back up to your valve cover. And if you have a hose going to your gas tank that it gets hooked up back there as well. Now this particular air filter box, I will note right here that I had to actually cut this section out. So I just grabbed a pair of uh, uh, wire cutters and actually just snipped that section out. Hook up the rubber hose, the valve cover, push this in secure, tight. Make sure our another hose comes over here. And let's go back on. Make sure that the, everything is free and clear that you're not pinching the gas line once you do reinstall that. At this point, I'm gonna be taking my 3 8 inch inner diameter hose and I'm gonna be taking my hose barb reducer I'm gonna be hooking that up onto here. Before I do that, I'm gonna make sure that my hose clamp is in place. Once the hose is on there, I'm gonna make sure that it's securely clamped into place. With that securely clamped into place, I'm gonna take my longer hose now, which is the quarter inch inner diameter and I'm going to fit that onto that hose barb reducer. I'm gonna make sure that my hose clamps are in place and to not bore you with that, I'm just gonna simply move on to the next thing but make sure those are secure. At this point, you'll be taking your regulator, putting it in, into the end of that quarter inch line and putting your hose clamp in place, making sure that everything is secure and you are almost ready to go. Let's go over some of the nuances and problems that I came up with while I was running this. With everything installed at this point, I'm gonna let you know that with this carburetor, I had a little bit of trouble with this knob. Because of the vibrations of the engine, the knob would twist and turn, and I would have difficulty starting or keeping it, keeping it started. This knob pointing in the d correct direction was of the utmost importance, because when you switch it to natural gas, you're letting a different amount of fuel through here. So, with running liquid propane, I used this state-of-the-art device called a piece of duct tape. And I duct taped over that knob to make sure that it didn't turn. If this turned at all, in the slightest way, one direction or the other, this wouldn't work very well. Now, now that I have it running, in order to start it, I'm gonna burp the diaphragm. And when I burp the diaphragm, you're actually gonna be letting some propane through there so long as you have your regulator in place properly. In order to put the, start the engine up, I would push the regulator in, switch it all the way to high. Make sure that there is no flow. You have to listen to it at this point and see if there's any flow going through anything. There should not be. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to tune this down and make sure that your regulator is working. There should be zero gas flow at this point. 
Once you're ready to start, I have it on high, I burp the regulator for a couple of seconds, and I'll give the engine a couple of pulls. If that does not work right away, you may want to try your luck at a little bit of starting fluid. Now in order to do this, you're going to be popping your air filter box, removing your air filter from right here, and spraying a little bit of that starter fluid into the housing. If it is now running perfectly with your starter fluid in place, you want to make sure that that screw is aligned properly, make sure that that control is aligned properly, burp it a little bit. You should not need to use starter fluid more than the first time, just as you're learning this new carburetor a little bit. Let's take a look at the dyno numbers, the engine results, what this actually does to change your engine, a tachometer tip that I'm gonna be bringing to you, some practical uses, of course we have the generator over here, but I'm gonna be playing around with this go-kart somewhat as well. Let's check that out. So when I have this on the small engine dyno, what I'm looking at are numbers that are completely irrelevant for my generator, and I'll show you why in a moment here and numbers with the throttle stop screw pulled back. So with a stock engine, we're looking at the engine with uh, regular gasoline in it. This is 87 octane with the stabilizer and a little bit of seat foam just to make sure that it doesn't go bad over time because it does have ethanol in it. 6.7 horsepower at 3000 RPM, max of 3600 RPM on a stock engine. With propane, six horsepower at 3400 RPM. So it lost a significant amount of torque max at 4100 rpm and this is the number that we're going to be taking a look at bink throttle stop screw pull back for the engines that actually have a throttle stop screw 7.28 horsepower at 3650 rpm with a max of 4600 rpm about 10 foot pounds of torque 7.18 horsepower at 3600 rpm bink not too different between the propane and gasoline however this number right here you can tell has a significant difference from one to the other. And our torque is also up by quite a bit. So less horsepower, more torque, significantly higher RPM. Why would we want to be taking a look at a tachometer? Let's check that out on the generator and then move on to the go-kart and get some real world results. All right, time for a little practical application. Now we have our generator here and the air filter box is gonna be taken off a little bit different from what I showed on the demonstration unit. You're gonna be using the taller choke lever on there as well and replacing everything just as I showed you with our demo unit. The go-kart, I'm gonna be showing you with the tachometer here. Now the tachometer might actually help you as well with your generator and I will explain why now. Let's go over that. As you may notice here, I have zero throttle control whatsoever. This thing is just going 100% all the time what the engine is set up for. So when you swap out the carburetor, it's just gonna go, it's go time. Before I swap out my carburetor though, I'm gonna hook up a little digital tachometer and see what the RPM is. I'm gonna see the RPM because when this thing is going with the load on it, it's gonna tell me where it really wants to run, where that sweet spot is for the generator to make sure that I'm putting enough power out or I'm not putting out too much power. It may be a little bit overkill, don't be concerned, these carburetors are actually designed to run roughly with, with the engine that you're gonna be working with. However, just a little bit of a reassurance for $20 and you get a learning experience out of it. Kind of fun to play around with. With our propane carburetor here, you may notice the tank coming out of the generator has a petcock with a fuel shutoff valve, so you're not gonna need this for all scenarios. Some generators do not have that. I just wanted to give you a heads up. You're gonna be using the taller choke lever for this particular engine. Again, engines differ, and you will not need a extra length of hose because this goes right in there. Quick look at a go-kart stock engine, Predator engine. Well, it's semi-stock. I actually hooked up a lighting coil to run these LED lights off the front here, but that's a whole different video. I've got this Predator 212cc engine, and I'm gonna be putting propane on it instead of gasoline. Now the gasoline that's inside of there has 87 plus octane boost, like a lot of octane boost from what I just dumped it in doing the nitrous oxide testing video. And let's take a baseline of what this is like without the propane. Check it out. <laughs> Sliding all over the place. So this car right now is just set up on gasoline with an octane boost and I'm getting the top speed 
and my top tachometer rating at about 42, 50, 40, 300 RPM. So here's my baseline. I'm gonna throw that propane carburetor on there and I'm gonna see where everything goes from there. All right, so we're looking at 4,300 RPM at a max speed of 27. Let's throw that propane carburetor on here and see if we have any different results. And just like that, no more gas tank. Idle does need to go back up. Quarter turn. See if this is any better. Oh, so muddy. Let's spin her around, shall we? <laughs> Propane go kart. <laughs> I'm still in control. We're still good here. 4,500 RPM. 4,500 RPM. 4,600 RPM. <laughs> Here's a big bump. Oh, there goes my bum. Woo. Woo. Oh, what is the top speed? What is the top speed? Uh, 29. 29, can we see that? 29. Propane is where it's at. <laughs> All right, well, that was fun. Propane actually does make the go-kart faster. And it makes it faster than a go-kart with so much octane boost in the fuel that it might blow up by on its own. That was a fun one. I don't know where people are coming from. Normally I live out in the middle of nowhere. That was a fun one. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, look at me, I'm wearing a helmet. <laughs> Everybody's like, why are you wearing a helmet, dude? I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day.